And good morning, everybody. I'm one of the first meteorologists next door. It's springtime in Iowa, and that means we are always under the threat for severe weather. Today happens to be one of those days. So for today's Weather First workbook, I thought it would be a little interesting to look at what goes into a severe weather forecast. Now, to top things off, let's talk about the risk for severe weather today. We do have what we call a slight risk. That's a two out of five for severe weather here in eastern Iowa today. And when we talk about the threat for severe weather, that includes tornadoes, damaging wind gusts, large hail, and a threat for flash flooding or very heavy rain. You can see today our entire area in that slight risk. The S Storm Prediction Center issues the severe weather outlooks every day, multiple times throughout the day. It's a five point scale, a marginal risk, a slight risk, an enhanced risk, a moderate risk, and a high risk. That is the issues that uh, we talk about the categories of severe weather. So what goes into a severe weather forecast? Well, the biggest things is slim. Think of slim. We talk about severe weather. We're talking about shear, lift, instability, and moisture. That is slim. So let's talk about those different severe weather parameters and how it relates to severe weather. Shear, of course, is something we think about pretty often. That is the change in wind speed and wind direction with height. So today, for example, later on this afternoon, all those blue dots coming in from the south, that is a southerly wind coming in at the surface later on this afternoon. But if you go higher up in the atmosphere, a couple thousand feet, you'll notice the winds with they were oriented by the green dots coming in more out of the west. You'll also notice that those green dots are moving much faster. So you can already kind of tell there's a difference in direction that these dots are moving in. Again, this is representing the wind speed. We tilt the camera down. We kind of show you a little bit better perspective of what's going on here. Again, the blue dots going away from the camera while the green dots coming in across the top. That is what we call wind shear. That is creating spin in the upper level of the atmosphere, and that wind shear is what produces storms. So we talked about shear. Now let's talk about lift. Lift is something that we need to get storms to actually get going. The most common examples of lift include a cold front, which we'll have arriving later on this afternoon. Also a warm front and air of low pressure. We call this a triple point, basically the intersection of a warm front, air of low pressure, and a cold front. And this storm system produces lift in the atmosphere. As a cold front pushes on through, it pushes the air out of the way and causes it to rise along the leading edge of that cold front. So we have wind shear, we have lift. Let's talk about the next important aspect, and that is instability. Instability is essentially a measurement of how much energy is available to fuel thunderstorms. Typically speaking, it's measured in what we call joules per kilogram. It's a fancy term. Just remember the numbers, though. If you're under 1,000 cape, convective available potential energy. If you're under a thousand, generally it's pretty weak. That's not really self-sufficient for severe thunderstorms. But if you're in that 1000 to 2500 zone, that is what we call moderate instability. And that's pretty much what we have in place today. You can see values in Eastern Iowa, about 1700, maybe 2100 at the most. Overall, we'll call it moderate instability. Now, if you're in the summertime, you get those really hot, humid days, we could get that extreme instability of more than 4,000 K. And instability is really just the change in temperature the higher up that you go. So what this illustrates to us is that at the surface, temperature is likely low 70s, but you go just a couple thousand feet aloft, temperatures are below the freezing point. And so that change in temperature is exactly how unstable the atmosphere is. So we got instability as well. Now let's talk about the last aspect in something that may be holding back our severe weather threat today, and that is moisture. Moisture is most notably measured in dew point. The dew point is essentially how much moisture is in the atmosphere. That's measured again by dew point. For severe weather, you generally need to see dew point values of about 55 degrees or higher. That is enough moisture to kind of get storms going. For tornadoes, generally speaking, dew points of 60 or higher will get you tornadoes. Now, this is just a guide, not a rule. For example, in December of 2015, I saw a tornado with dew point of 53, a very rare event, but it is possible. So again, these are just kind of guides for severe weather. So in place today, we have shear, 
we have lift, we have instability, and we have decent moisture. Not great, but we have enough to kind of get storms to form. And that again is the severe weather aspect. Now to forecast severe weather, we have a lot of what we call computer models. Computer models can be as big as the room that we're in. When we talk about computer models, they're essentially just computers that do a ton and millions and millions of mathematical calculations to forecast severe weather. So let's pull up the scan do here. And what you'll see is one of our websites that we use to forecast severe weather. That's pivotalweather.com. On this website, you can see there are tons of different websites available or different types of weather models available. You have what we call the global models that cover the entire world, the entire, the entire world, and they tend to go out much, much further. For severe weather, we have what's called convective allowing models. Those models, they tend to be higher resolution, which means that instead of one dot representing, you know, a big area for temperatures, it's much, much smaller. So you can actually see those individual little features like thunderstorms. Typically when we're forecasting severe weather, there's usually three main ones that we're looking at. That's the HER, the High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model. We also look at the NAM 3 kilometer, the NAM 3 kilometer resolution, CONUS, which is the continental United States. And then we can look at a few other weather models as well, but those are kind of the big two. And the third one is actually exclusive to our weather computers here in the studio called the RPM. So let's look at one of those weather models, for example, called the HER, the High Resolution Rapid Refresh. And these model runs every single hour. So we're constantly getting in new data every hour of what this model thinks may or may not happen. And what you'll see as I go through time here, it's actually trying to predict what the rain may do. Now we had the showers that are moving on through this afternoon, early afternoon, the cloud cover as well. The biggest question that we still have for today's severe weather is, will there be a second round of storms later on this afternoon? And what you can see in this weather model, in the eastern part of Iowa, this model does try and form more showers and storms in the second part of the day. Those also could be severe. So that's something, of course, that we're going to watch. If you look at a different weather model, this is one, the NAM model, will go forward and you'll notice it also kind of fires some storms later on this afternoon. But one thing you'll definitely see is that they look very different. All weather models are wrong. Every single weather model is wrong, but we use them as tools to forecast severe weather. So we know that again, there is shear in the environment today. We know that there is lift in the environment today. We know that there is instability and we know that there is moisture, slim. Now, let's take a look at some other tools. So if we can pop up the uh, graphics full screen, what we're gonna do here is take a look at actual real-time weather information. And so the other big things that we use are called weather satellites. Now, when we typically talk about severe weather, we're always looking at the radar and satellite view, and it looks like this on television. All the white that you see on the map there, that is cloud cover, that the satellite up in the sky is looking down at and looking at. Meanwhile, we have the green showing up on the radar here. That is rain that's being depicted by weather radar. We use two very different tools that are located in very different places to monitor severe weather in real time. Satellites, very, very important. So we have what's known as the GOES satellites. They're about 23,000 500 feet aloft, they're used to forecast things like tropical storms. And in the central part of the country, they're used to forecast severe weather and winter storms. Now, GOES R or GOES 16, it covers the eastern part of the country. It cannot see what's happening way off out in the ocean. Therefore, we use two different weather satellites. GOES 16, that covers the eastern part of our country, and GOES West, or GOES 17, which covers the western part of the country. Two satellites that work in tandem, that work as a team to help forecast severe weather. And one thing that we did talk about a few weeks ago, we talked about weather radar. That is also another very important aspect of forecasting severe weather for us. Now, in our case, we use weather radar. They are many, many miles away from these thunderstorms that we're trying to look at in real time. So here's, a, for example, a thunderstorm, but many, many miles away, that is where we can find a Doppler radar. Closest to Cedar Rapids, where we're at right now, our radar is down in Davenport, Iowa. It's about 60 to 70 miles away from us. Now, storms form a long way away from the radar. 
However, that's okay because weather radar is very strong. It can see a very long distance away and can actually study that storm and see what's happening. It can see whether we're seeing rain, whether we're seeing hail, or maybe or not we're talking about a severe weather threat. So while we are on air, on television, we're also doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. We're constantly looking at weather models and we're constantly looking at the very latest satellite information and radar information. So when we're forecasting severe weather, there are a ton of things that we're constantly looking at. And that's why on days like today, we are extremely busy. So that was a little bit of a different weather first workbook. I hope you found that entertaining and interesting at least. We're always looking for ideas. If you do have something you would like us to cover, any questions you have about the weather, we're happy to answer that. Leave us a comment here on Facebook or you can email us as well. I'm weather first meteorologist Nick Stewart, meteorologist Rebecca Coleman. We'll be back on Thursday at 10.30 a.m. to talk about another severe weather topic and a weather first workbook.